in a competitive way, both domestically as well as internationally. So uh, one of the areas that we, we appreciated was Kenya was known for beach and, and, and safari, mm -hmm. but Kenya is so much more. So we started an exercise that called on uh, the private sector, who are key partners, to relook at the offerings that they have and uh, see how many of those offerings could pass the test of the signature experience collection. And that's where it began. And um, this exercise took um, a year because the, the whole process um, is quite intense. It has a, a pre-qualification audit. It then has an audit of these experiences. We then have an, a desk audit first and then an on-site audit. And uh, following the on-site audit and, and the verification of the same, we get a pre-selected um, collection. And in uh, 2019, we were able to shortlist um, out of the 30 experiences that entered into the Magical Kenya Signature Experience, we were able to pre-select 15 um, magical Kenya signature experiences oh, and that was the beginning of the of, 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 of our collection the 2019 2020 uh, signature experiences all right well if you did not have the chance to take a look at those experiences well you're lucky take a look unbelievably magical wow, wow wow dr betty did you go to any of these destinations after you know seeing the, the videos that were submitted did you go so I must uh, confess I have not <laughs> gone to the destinations, but I know about them. <laughs> All right, so we also have Honorable Safina in studio. Yeah. I don't know just how much of Kenya you have, of course, traveled, but there's so many beautiful just pockets of paradise that we just really don't know about. Mm -hmm. Of the videos that you watched, where have you been that you would just love for people to go? Uh, I think uh, a classic example is Eloana. Yes. And... Um, it just shows you that uh, there's so much that Kenya is rich in, and not all of us appreciate it. And that's why this signature, uh, Magical Kenya signature experiences, just try to showcase that there's much more for Kenya, for, for Kenyans and even for non-Kenyans to experience in Kenya. Yes, very yeah. true. Elewana Collection, please, you have to go check it out. If you want to go to Diani, they have a boutique hotel. There's Elsa's Kopje in Meru. It's just wonderful. Now, as we talk about this program, Honorable Safina, how do you feel or, you know, how do you see that this program has supported the vision for the National Tourism Blueprint 2030? Uh, well, um one of the things that uh, the Blueprint has set out to do is uh, how to distinguish Kenya as a destination from other destinations. And uh, traditionally we are known for beach and safari, but we are not the only ones in that space. And therefore we had to come up with something that is unique, authentic, that can only be experienced in Kenya. And that's why now we, when, uh, with the 15 of uh, the pioneer uh, experiences, now we are moving uh, to 29 and we are growing by the day. So it just shows us that uh, uh, one, one of the, our pillars in tourism is diversification. So this is one of the way we diversify our offerings uh, to the world. Uh, secondly is on the, what do you call it? Uh, uh, the authentic, authentic, okay, uniqueness mm -hmm. of, our, of, of, of our experiences. Uh, because the, today's traveler is a traveler who wants to have personalized experiences. Mm -hmm. And therefore, this signature experience creates that. Mm -hmm. And you can tailor your own experience. You could visit the same place you and I, and we live with different experiences. Mm -hmm. that's, that's very interesting that you said that, the unique experiences. And you also mentioned to t today's traveler, mm -hmm. meaning that people just don't travel the way they used to before. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's because of social media, or we've just sort of evolved with how it is that we travel. Mm -hmm. Now, Dr. Betty, what market trends, if any, informed mm -hmm. the Magical Kenya Signature Experiences Program, and what does it aim to achieve? Right, so the Magical Kenya Signature Experience was aiming to achieve, um, as, as the Honorable PS says, a, a more immersive experience that people have. And this was driven by the trends of uh, various travelers. So what happened is that um, over time, uh, the traveler has sort of changed and, and they've changed in a fairly interesting way. So travelers no longer want to go to a destination and not experience the destination. And, and, and what, do, what do I mean by this? They want to go to the destination and really understand the heartbeat of that destination. 
And this is usually driven by how immersive the, the sorts of experiences that are available to them are. So for example, um, maybe five or 10 years ago, people didn't think um, homestays or community um, engagements were an important thing. But what we, find is, we found is that travelers with time want to explore a destination that has a lot more to offer, just more than just what they see on the surface. So for example, if they go to say a, um, a, a safari destination like the Mara, take that for example, the Mara has an ecosystem that supports not only the heritage of the wildlife there, but also the communities around there. And the communities around there are, find that the, 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 all the wildlife and, 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 the, and the experiences there are really a heritage for them, and it's their livelihood. So people go there and they want to know outside of the wildlife, who, what else goes on? For example, you go to, um, say, the coast you go to uh, uh, an area like Watamu. So you don't look at the coast homogeneously. You look at the various uh, brands that we have at the coast. And at the coast, when you go to Watamu, it's a completely different experience. At, in Watamu, you come and find an experience such as the whale migration. That forms for us uh, an amazing USP because we have the twin migration. It happens at, at, at around the same time as, 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 as the wildebeest migration, Ju June, July to September. And, and that is, is something that is not expected. You go out into sea and you're looking at this 30-ton, um, um, really elegant um, uh, mammal that migrates with its children, with its family, throughout that period. And, and, and that's not something that um, you forget easily. Um, and also whilst you're there, we have the experiences that we have are, uh, are centered around different uh, areas. So we have adventure uh, where you, you would go to, um, say, Sagana and you go, you go and experience something like rafting, whitewater rafting. That's thrilling, it's exhilarating, and, and it gives a completely different um, appreciation of that destination. Mm. So what you find is that you end up having different options that people would not ordinarily think about, but um, enrich uh, their stay within the destination. Yes. Yeah. You know, it's so interesting you said that. And the whole time I just thought, guilty, guilty. I go to Diani or Watamu. I'm just there in the hotel. The most I do is maybe snorkeling, but then you come back. We don't do as much as we should. There's so much culture. And in fact, as you speak about Watamu, I do want us to start talking about Watamu. Now, right in the heart of Watamu, stretching inland from the expansive Indian Ocean is the Mida Creek. Ever heard of it? Among groove-lined oasis with statuesque palms sea turtles, several species of fish, birds, the serenity of these waters, it just beckons lovers of nature to float peacefully through the forest, get carried seaward by the outgoing tide. This tidal phenomenon happens right after a full or a new moon, when the outgoing tide is strongest. This floating adventure is brought to you by Watamu Treehouse. I am so embarrassed as someone who has visited Watamu a number of times to see that for the first time on TV is just a wow. But that's why we have the magical Kenya signature experiences so that you can discover all of these amazing destinations. Now, if you're looking for a different mode of seafaring, why not try kayaking upon the clear and serene waters of Mida Creek? Now, beginners like myself, experts alike can paddle peacefully in a guided kayak while exploring the rich ecosystem of the channel, where the mangroves, the palms, and the migratory birds, you know, fly in from as far away as Europe, all coexisting in this tropical nirvana.
I think that's something I'll definitely try. Siki Lasa road trips, we do this and go to Vashas, as people always say, that is what we want to experience. Now, still in Watamu, the Zero to Hero experience is an exciting opportunity to learn kite surfing, yeah, from tribe water sports in just three days. One, two, three. Enthusiasts with absolutely no prior experience can expect to graduate as a proficient kite surfers. Imagine that. The consistent trade winds that blow favorably past this past part rather of our coastal line all year round as well as the surrounding shallow waters make it an idyllic spot to attempt an overwater kite surfing adventure such as this one. All right, now, away from the activities you can do in the water, how about going to take a look at something that is in the water? Far from the thundering hooves of the wildebeest migration, every year across the Mara, we bring you a different kind of annual animal pilgrimage, one that goes almost unseen at sea. Dr. Betty touched on this. Between July and September, every single year, humpback whales, they travel thousands of kilometers from the South Pole to visit the warm shores of the Kenya coast carve and mate. Hemingway's Watamu will take any willing explorer aboard a boat on a half a day adventure to see these majestic marine giants. They can weigh up to 30 tons and they reach the lengths of what 17 meters or more. If you've never seen a whale this should be you traveling through Watamu. Take a look. looks so good. You can't even believe that that's Kenya. Can you imagine? Now, as you and I know, Kenya's pristine white sandy beaches are famous the world over. Diani, situated right here on Kenya's south coast, is no exception. In this little slice of paradise, one may spice up their beach holiday by taking an entirely different kind of safari on a bicycle very different. There's lots to see, lots to explore on two wheels from Mwamanga village or a visit to the sacred forest, the local market, schools. This wonderful opportunity has been made possible by Diani Bikes. It's a chance for you to learn a lot about the local culture, for you to immerse yourself, develop a skill, keep fit all while on holiday. Watch this. I, I think I have an idea of what I will be doing this year when all of these holidays are coming up. Man, I wish I had seen this right before Valentine's too. <laughs> now, as we talk about policies and regulations, um, uh, Honorable Safina, what do we currently have in place to help diversify what we're currently offering as far as tourism is concerned? Well, uh, one is that uh, these products are uh, imagined and brought to life by private sector. So one of the things that we, that we, we are doing is uh, engagement. One of the policy direction that we have deliberately taken is engagement with the private sector because they are the ones who bring this uh, experience to life. Uh, so uh, stakeholder engagement is very crucial in our policy and that's why we work with the associations that uh, the ecosystem of tourism uh, has in place. Um, secondly is on uh, um, the diversification in itself is actually a strategy beyond what we have been known for as Kenya. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and this comes from the appreciation that uh, our traveler, the, demographic, the demographics of our travel has changed. We are now seeing that, that today's traveler is more adventurous. Today's traveler is more inquisitive. 
um, and therefore we we are using what we are what we are known for like using the beach but develop more and more products that would enrich that experience so um, and thirdly is uh, we, we want to uh, profile yeah profile these experiences as government because we have a responsibility to market the situation as a country uh, so our job is to profile them um, and this experience the program of magical kenya signature experience is one way of profiling them so every year we encourage them to, you know, to, 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 to send the submissions, uh, going through different stages of uh, uh, qualification. But at the end of the day, everybody's a winner. So, so, so for us, partnership with private sector, uh, diversification of our products, and of course, uh, uh, profiling them uh, to the world. Yes. That is our job. Yes. Now, as we market and as we profile, what else are we doing to ensure that we re remain competitive as a destination? I mean, all of these, when you go on YouTube, you see all of these many ads of all of these other destinations, people marketing their countries. And how exactly does this program, the Magical Kenya Signature, uh, signature Experiences, how does it fit in that? Well, uh, before I, before I <laughs> allow Dr. Rabia, I, th I think we must acknowledge that um, technology has really played a big part in, uh, in, uh, in, in today's uh, um, marketing you know, strategy for any, in, of any product. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, have to ha we, we, we have been encouraging more digital presence for all our products. Um, in fact, Corona has been a very good uh, experience for us. That means um, more, uh, less contact with people. Uh, so, so, so these are some of the things that we have been uh, encouraging. So when we are talking about increasing internet connectivity, mm -hmm. it is not just for MPS and everything, but it's actually to make it easier for us to, to connect with the world from the comfort of their homes. Wonderful. Now, I know Dr. Betty wanted to add mm -hmm. on that. You wanted to respond to the question again as well. Yes. Um, you can take it. I, I think um, what the Honorable PS has, has mentioned in terms of the digital space, technology has changed the way that uh, our route to market is. Uh, because if you don't have a presence um, in the digital space and you're not able to serve uh, various um, uh, options, in terms of what your destination has to offer on a number of different form factors, then what you do is you miss a lot of people. Because um, gone are the days when people would sit down or buy a magazine to figure out, or go to a, a travel agent to figure out where they want to go. Um, User-generated content has almost been become the, the, the vehicle that people um, review or uh, evaluate what they would like to do. So when consumers have an idea of where they'd like to visit, even if it's a destination, the first thing that they do is they want to look at the reviews. So um, uh, uh, portals such as uh, TripAdvisor, such as Expedia, all come together to form um, a basis of an, on how people make uh, decisions about where they're going to go. And, 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 and people want to see or want to hear the experience of somebody who has already gone there. And, 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 and therefore, it's important that th the experience is, first of all, um, truthful. Um, it is something that somebody can talk about having experience, and people are, are quite discerning. So um, a destination cannot um, uh, just decide that we'll just claim that this, we are able to provide this, because people will look at a number of different reviews and on, on, on a number of different platforms before they make the decision. Mm, yeah. That is true. You yeah. want to see what they said about it on Twitter, then you want to go to TripAdvisor, yeah. then you want to call your cousin who was there before. Yeah. You want to, because you want to find out everything just so that you can know what to expect. Yes. You want to control mm -hmm. your expectations. Mm -hmm. Now, with Honorable Safina mentioned, you know, the pandemic, which of course the industry was hit pretty hard. Mm -hmm. But did we see a surge in numbers? Did we see more Kenyans now traveling within the country due to the travel ban? Um, of course, that is being experienced all over the world. But mm -hmm. was there a surge in numbers? I wouldn't say that there was a surge in numbers, but there was um, there was a new realization that um, there's a new latent market, and that is really the domestic market. Uh, the domestic market has been an important market for us, but uh, the potential of the domestic market is extremely apparent. And, 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 and what COVID did is because um, 
that market was within the vicinity of the destination, people were able to make decisions quite quickly once uh, we were able uh, to lift the ban on travel. And, and we saw uh, people go out and, and be very, um, uh, uh, shall I say, adventurous. People immediately were wanting to experience places that they haven't been to before. They, we, we found that um, uh, the weekends people began to look at opportunities of things that they could do over short um, short weekends or, or, or over, over short um, stays. So for one or two days, they, then adventure has also grown because people have become very, um, very almost, almost um, athletic, should I say. People want to go for walks, they want to go for hikes. So they're discovering all of these places that we had in and around Kenya. And we too are also discovering them by them posting them and, and, and sharing them with their friends. So it's created a whole new uh, market that, that is just a latent market that we're able to serve. Yes, yeah. and in fact, we're about to showcase more destinations. Yeah. We're about to introduce you to places maybe you had never seen before. Mm -hmm. And that's what I really, really love about this evening is that even for me, I'm just watching all of these different videos and I'm wondering how did I not know about all of these different places? Now, as we keep it moving, a quaint getaway. Think about this. On an isolated beach, I want you to go with me. Close your eyes if you must. We're dreaming together. All right. So on an isolated beach in Watamu, that of Towards the health conscious traveler a fulfilling holiday of immersion in nature now it's packaged as an unforgettable experience of daily yoga classes in a unique open-air studio what Tamu tree house yields unparalleled views of the surrounding nature and the azure blue Indian Ocean from the highest point in town namaste Take care. Let me tell you, there is a lot of pressure. People are feeling very frustrated. Yoga is so relaxing. Meditation helps so much. And meditation in what? Tabut! What? Sign me up, please. Sign me up. Now, in Kenya, we pride ourselves on having a travel experience for everyone adventurers on a budget from around the world gather at distant relatives eco lodge all year round to enjoy beautiful sunsets picturesque ocean views and popular live music events now this is situated upon the waters of the serene kilifi creek it is a mecca for the environmentally and socially conscious the interpid traveler can indulge in thrilling activities such as snorkeling moonlit dow sailing let me tell you first of all those dow sailings are everything that's where you want to propose that's where you want to just it's a wonderful, beautiful, romantic experience you just have to go through. Walks through the neighboring villages, wild cliff adventures. Wow, just please have a look. As I watch all of these videos, people are very talented as far as editing and shooting and taking pictures is concerned. I need to up my game. I really do. Now, away from the coast and deep inland, right in the heart of bustling capital city of Nairobi, lies a memorable, tented eco safari experience within the Nairobi National Park. Nine guest tents make up the uniquely special Nairobi tented camp, the only one within the park itself. Now, it offers a uniquely contrasting set of the wild and the great outdoors against the stunning backdrop of city buildings, the park's wildlife, including lions, giraffes, buffaloes, zebras, and so many more, can be sighted at daybreak or in the evening as the sun starts to retire in the west. This, you have no excuse. If you live in Nairobi, if you've never been to the park, let's just, let, as you take a look at this, I'll, I'll be praying for you I'll just right now. You just watch this. Can you 
imagine a park in the city, the only one in the world and you have not gone? Right here. It's like 15 minutes. It's, it's a dr right. Surely, come on. If you've never been there, I, I don't know what to tell you. But it's just m magical to go and see all of these animals a few minutes away from where you live. Where else do you get that in the world? In case you're just starting to watch this, hello and welcome to it. This is the Magical Kenya Signature Experiences. Today we're unveiling the collection of 2021 and 2022 as we also introduce to you places you might not have known right here in this beautiful country and in studio with me i have dr betty radier and i also have the ps for tourism um uh, honorable safina kwekwet sungu as you can also send in your questions by the way if you have any that you want to ask i want to talk to honorable um safina as we we were talk talking about international and and local travelers what are we can, are we preparing different sort of like offerings for the both for these two different travelers? Yes, indeed. Okay. Uh, um, we are aware that uh, international travel uh, will recover to the pre-COVID times, mm -hmm. uh, probably in 2024. Uh, and between that now and then, uh, business must continue. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we will have to tap into the domestic market. It may not be a huge market, yeah, because the spending power uh, may not be as, as huge as uh, other uh, geographic, uh, you know, uh, destination, but we believe that uh, uh, if we create something that is good enough, then the number that we saw in December can be retained. Because one of the things that we must appreciate is that the people who we the excitement that we saw in the domestic market, some of those num those are not just virgin travelers. Some of them have been traveling before, but they've been going to other destinations other than ourselves. They've been going to South Africa. They've been going to the Middle East. Uh, they've been going to Europe. But because of now the borders were closed, they became adventurers and found that there is a good, good, there are good enough experience in Kenya. So our job now is to to create loyalty and connect with them so that they remain here. So um, it doesn't mean that for a domestic traveler, then the quality has to be lower or the standards have to be lower. No, what we are saying is that um, their experiences and their interests might be different. Uh, and therefore, we need to, as, 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 as industry uh, designs products for a domestic uh, traveler, they have to keep that in mind. Uh, we have younger people traveling, uh, people who don't have much time, probably three, four days, five days. So even the itinerary has to be uh, rich, mm -hmm. but also engaging enough. So that is now the, the shift that uh, private sector is embracing. And we've seen that uh, it can be done because uh, we've seen, uh, we saw that in December. And we also saw that in uh, July, just immediately we opened uh, uh, the country. So, um, uh, but we also, we are saying that, uh, I still emphasize that we need to set standards that are good enough because that person, uh, the Kenyan, if you don't give them good, good quality, they'll go elsewhere. Mm, they yes. will. Or they will also go and complain mm. on Twitter. Hey, the Honorable <laughs> Safina, I don't know if you've heard of people called KOT, but people yeah. can really can yeah. really complain. Now, we move over to the KTB CEO. And, I, mm. you know, for whether you're a, a Kenyan hoping to travel more or if it's, you know, a foreigner who's watching this right now, mm -hmm. why should they be excited about this program? Mm -hmm. So, um, the most exciting thing about this program mm -hmm. is it has a, 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 an authentic, high-quality experience for a diverse number of people. So you find within the program things around culture, heritage, adventure, um, luxury, uh, wellness, um, culinary, um, arts. So within our now 44 collection, if you look at the offering that is available to you to experience, you, you will find something for every type of person. And, 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 and when we say you're finding something, you're finding something that has already been audited, it has been evaluated, it is of a very high standard, and, and is available to you right within your vicinity. If you're coming into the destination, you can almost shortlist all of these um, experiences that you want to have before you get to the destination and book them, because these, these, these experiences are export ready. So they are available to you online. You're able to, to view them and book them because these are businesses that have a, a very high level of, of uh, integrity. They're businesses that have been in business for a long time and, and, and have built um, these experiences and have passion around it. 
Let's so, talk about So this is something that is ready for you to consume. What is the process, Dr. Betty? I'm so sorry for interrupting you, but mm -hmm. what is the process? So the process is quite rigorous. Mm -hmm. uh, we start off by, as, uh, as, as mentioned, we first of all um, appeal through our key stakeholders um, uh, and our, and our, uh, uh, our private sector uh, tourism body, which is uh, Kenya Tourism Federation, and we call for entries. And uh, in the entry, we ask for pre-qualification. Now, the pre-qualification goes through an audit that just looks at businesses. So it does the same sort of evaluation that you would do if you were evaluating an ongoing business. So it will ask very specific uh, questions around the, 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 the health of that business and the longevity that that business has had. So once that has been evaluated and, and, and you qualify, as an ongoing business and as, as a going concern, we then move into the area of experiences. And in these experiences, you have to have been, you have to have been participating or actually building this experience for longer than two years. So, and, and this is just, um, it's, it's, it's one of the, the measures that we put in place to ensure that we are able to deliver exactly what that experience um, sets out to do. So we make sure that this is an authentic experience that somebody has been uh, developing over time and is a passion that they have. And, and that's the pre-qualification. And, and we go through the, you, you have to fill in the detail. We go through a desk uh, audit, following which we then um, shortlist. And from the shortlist, we then go on to an on-site audit. And the on-site audit is not a rushed audit. We actually go through the entire experience. And, and, and live that experience, looking at all of the facets that help uh, that, that um, a visitor that would go to that outlet would be uh, interested in. So we look at um, both the amenities around that experience as well as the, as well as the experience itself. And once we feel that that experience uh, meets that criteria, then on that case we begin to uh, pre-qualify them. On pre-qualifying them, we obviously uh, guide them and give them um, feedback in terms of additional measures they need to put in place mm -hmm. uh, if the experience is not up to scratch. And we give them time to do this before we come back and review that this, that this, this owner or this investor really is vested in this experience. You know what that and then we now come and do the pre-selection. Because a lot of the times what happens is what you read online or what someone, yeah. or what a hotel or whether it's an eco lodge, whatever it is, some of them lie. They yeah. say this is, you know, an experience that you like no other, you will get this and that and yeah. this and and you get there and you wonder what happened. Yeah. And there's something people say, what you ordered versus what you got. Yeah. When you get there, you arrive and, <laughs> well, so I, mean, I don't know why you're laughing, but you get there and yeah. It doesn't look like what they had said on their yeah. website. Now, that is what you make sure you go there to authenticate. Yeah. Yes. And, and even sure do a mystery shopper if we need to. Mm. Uh, so because remember, we are, we are qualifying for you uh, what we call a magical Kenya signature experience. So it has to deliver. And it has to deliver consistently over time. Yeah. Now, when we talk about traveling, um, Honorable Safina, there is this misconception that traveling is expensive, you know, it's not for everybody. And it's not, it's quite affordable. And like Dr. Betty said, you just look at the experience that matches what it is that you want to do. Um, but maybe you can tell us more about how affordable it is to travel within the country. Well, it depends on what you, how you want to get there first. If you want to go by air, obviously it will be more expensive. Um, but uh, bringing down the cost of travel, is also one of the things that we do and it's part of our policy uh, uh, intervention uh, because uh, again uh, these are businesses that have to uh, to support themselves um, but uh, they are the tail end so there are other facilitators in between so tra uh, transport itself is, is a component of uh, that 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 adds to the cost of travel other than accommodation, other than now the fees, if you're going to a park, the fees of, that you enter into a park. So if you look at uh, what we've done in Kenya now, like um, park entry fees have been halved, 50%. Uh, we, we've been talking with the industry to, 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 to rightly price um, these experiences. Uh, so that, uh, because if, if you want people to stay for longer, because you build an experience by, by, by living that experience. Mm -hmm. So people have to stay for long, 
um, and, and therefore they, they must be able to afford that. So we make connectivity easier uh, through road, through rail, through air, by having more, uh, improving the infrastructure, for example, uh, uh, airstrips uh, and, and, and uh, having more frequencies flying to those areas. So all that is in a bid to make traveling uh, affordable. So with 50,000 Kenya shillings, you can actually have a three day. Uh, for example, um, in, uh, in Watamu, for example. Yeah, and, and, and because uh, we are offering, uh, I mean, these uh, 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 um, mm -hmm. investors that are offering different packages for families, for, 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 for soul, you know, for soul travelers. So what you, ch you, you can actually package an experience for yourself within the budget that you can afford. Mm -hmm. There yes. you go. You yeah. don't have to break the bank. Mm -hmm. You can work, even if it's even 20, 25,000. Like I said, mm -hmm. even when we start with the park that's yeah. right here, yeah. it's very, very affordable. You yeah. just go there with like three, four K, just buy some food and you're ready to enjoy yourself. Now, let me talk to the adventurer, the one who lives for the outdoors and the exhilarating rush of adrenaline. I want to talk to you, the pioneer Kenyan company for adventure tourism, Savage Wilderness, will introduce you to a fast-paced world of water sports, such as kayaking on River Tana and Athi. It is bound to provide a wholesome outdoor experience, one not soon to be forgotten. Well, these are the tips if you want to go kayaking don't go with nails all right ladies it's not fancy it's uh, when i say it's not fancy i mean that you can't survive because it's a very rigorous but do you enjoy yourself there's a rush that just comes over you the minute you think is this thing going to tilt over there's it's it's you'd love it you'd enjoy it now if a group activity is more up your alley savage wilderness has just the thing for you and your friends kenya offers a world-class rafting experience on the rapids of her long Longest rivers. That's the Athi and the Tana. Both expert and novice adventurers alike have the exciting opportunity to journey upon to calm waters or more challenging rapids in groups and in steady inflatable rafts. Just take a look at this. That seems like a wonderful activity to do, you know, um, as we close out the year. You know, I think that's something we'll try as the trend team. I think we're, I'm going to definitely suggest that. It looks like something you want to do um, in groups. But Dr. Betty, so is it kayaking or white water rafting? What, which it's one do you pick between the two? White water rafting. So, and you have to have a st strong stomach for it. That does, you don't look, trust me, you don't look like, what about you, Honorable Safina? What is this that you do that people will be very surprised that you enjoy? <laughs> well, uh, uh, I've yet to make my mind on what would be the, the most defining. But I think uh, I would love, um, I would love uh, a firm immersion, you know, yeah. where I, 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 live, I, I just experience firm life. Mm. Mm. Like I learned how to milk a cow. Uh -huh. I can learn that. Yes. Or a camel. I, 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 oh, a camel. <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> My people will tell you it is not easy, yeah. Honorable <laughs> Safina. It is pretty difficult, but I like that you want to immerse yourself. When you travel, even when you go to the Mara, you should go stay in the Manyata. You know, mm -hmm. go and, yeah. and learn how to bead something and, and, and eat with them and, and learn about their ceremonies and why certain things are so important. What is taboo mm -hmm. within the Maasai community? Go and learn about all of these things. Now, I also learned something, Dr. Betty. I don't know if you know this, but I, I, I found out that you enjoy yoga. Have you been to the 
Sunset yes. Yoga in Watamu? I've, I've been to the, to the Sunset Yoga in Watamu. And, and, and the first thing I think that, that grabs you is because it's on like three, three levels. Um, is that, and it's three levels in the middle of nowhere. They, they have managed to, to build an ecosystem around them that is already very serene. So all you see is, is, is just uh, vegetation. And, and because it's very high, you, when you get to the, the deck where they actually um, uh, carry out the yoga, you already uh, experience that relaxation. And, and, and the, the, the way that they've built it is also very um, beautiful and they've taken a lot of the, um, of the natural stone around there, uh, they've recycled glass and, and that's what they've used to decorate, um, uh, to decorate the tree house. So what it does is even when you get into that environment, you're already in, in the zone, um, uh, so to speak, of, 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 the, of the experience that you're going to have. And that makes a whole a whole difference. And, and and even if you if you consider why would you pick that as an experience, you can see there's some thought that has gone into what it is that people want to get out of yoga. It is a wellness thing. Mm. So um, the surrounding and 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 the the way that you set up where you want to do this is really important. It is also quite natural and green because the the height at which they've built uh, the house means that it is, it is very cool, even if it's, even if it's in, 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 in at the coast. So um, in that respect, you're able to see that there's real thought that has gone into this, and somebody has a passion to be able to ensure that people that visit that experience uh, achieve the wellness that they're looking for. Mm. Yes. Yes, and there's just you know they say that if you really if you lost yourself and you're trying to find yourself, the best mm. way to do it is in nature. Go, mm. you know, somewhere in a forest mm. or you know just and meditation is everything. So um, mm. imagining how wonderful it must be to combine the two, which is mm. meditation, and then now you just being surrounded with all of this nature. You've got mm. the beach, you've got you know the trees, and it's just wonderful. And trust mm. me, after the kind of year that we have all experienced back in 2020, these are the kind of activities that you want to start engaging in and there are so many more that we're going to be talking about as we introduce you to a different side of Kenya that many of you may have not seen all this of course thanks to magical Kenya as they unveil the signature experiences collection 2021 2022 so much more to come we're going to be um, rhino tracking at Borana we're going to be having another rhino extravaganza and more of that coming up right after the break don't go anywhere Fashion design is my dream yeah. Change your story, dream full steam yeah. Yeah. For a brighter path, gotta get to class yeah. Stop! Yeah. Gotta change, change my tissue No more tissue issue, it can be jammy, leaky, smelly Change your story, not your tissue With always three in one, get triple protection One looks leaks, two looks germs Three looks odor, three in one protection yeah. No more yeah. tissue, dream full steam From home way to runway, my future, my glory Let's all change, change the story With always three in one protection Available in day and night range Mm -mm -mm. New Tuzo Yogurt Cup Size Yako Bay Yako Raukia siku njema na tunukiwa offers Kila siku Pata offers zote mahali pamoja Ili uonge zaidi, utume SMS zaidi Na uprouse zaidi Wawusi jali Tuma na mbea kila supplier kwa hiyo sopo Enda jubile nitongea na kila mmoja wao Very good Piga star 444 Asis putunukiwe Kredo Dapo Dapo Raukia siku njema na tunukiwa offer Kila siku Let's see what they're developing right now. Mofix pants with anatomic fit technology. 
Mole Morphix Pants, an invention from babies for babies. You should also try Morphix. Today tastes like a new tradition. Like an old favorite. Tastes like all hands on deck and all eyes on the prize. Today tastes like a piece of the action. And it never tasted this good. This is NTV. And welcome back to the magical Kenya Signature Experiences as we unveil the 2021 and the 2022 uh, collection. Now, it has been just destination after destination. So many of them, I've just been listing them and I hope you are as well. And I'd love to know where it is that you're watching us from. Are you enjoying yourself? Are you learning and discovering all of these locations just as much as I am? Please do tag us at Magical Kenya at NTV Kenya at Amina Abdirabad. The hashtag is Magical Kenya. Your signature experiences there it is right at the bottom of the screen now we are back on land with more exciting experiences this is across the entire country tourists and animal lovers have long transversed the Masai Mara by road by air and on foot in search of the perfect nature filled experience in the wild a novel new way to crisscross this great reserve is on a bicycle can you can you see yourself on a bicycle guided by resident Maasai and accompanied by a vehicle? This is an adventure you just have to experience. Also by Savage Wilderness, which is all around you. It just brings cyclists up close with the migrating wildebeest and other wildlife. Now, once the sun begins to retire, guests can return to a thriving fly camp. Hot showers, sumptuous food as just a reward for their physical efforts that they made throughout the day. And this is a little bit of how it looks once you decide to cycle around the Mara. Cycling in the Mara. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but outdoor adventure sports have in recent times taken root and found a keen following among the fearless and the, and the thrill-seeking ones among us. Now, one such sport is abseiling, another is canyoning. Both are a rich mix of learning, fun, it's very challenging, and of course, the adventure. Brought to you by Rift Valley Adventures, indulge in Kenya's first and only holistic multi-activity adventure experience of abseiling and canyoning on one side of Mount Kenya and the dramatic 3,000 foot cliffs of the Great Rift Valley. Um, a lot of people have been cycling more. I see them in traffic. Just a lot more people who've taken it up as an exercise regimen. You know, when it's Saturday morning, you see people cycling with their kids. This is an adventure that you could try out with the family. Now, for those who are desiring the ultimate physical challenge and to scale new heights, literally, by the way, Mount Kenya provides a rewarding alpine climbing experience. A curated journey by the company Africa Asset includes fishing expeditions and scaling Africa's second highest peak, whether by trekking or climbing. This is a lifetime achievement for all who have ever attempted it.
we're just having a conversation in studio wondering when we're going to climb Mount Kenya. Um, in studio um, uh, with uh, the PS for Tourism, uh, doc, uh, doc, uh, Honorable Safina Kwekwetsungu, and of course the KTB CEO, Dr. Betty Radier. We're going to talk to them in a bit. Please, like I said, send in your questions and tag us, or you can tell me about some of the experiences that you've seen on screen that you've already gone through, that you've already lived. We would love to know. And of course, your suggestions. Send in the hashtag, of course, being magical Kenya signature experiences at magical Kenya on Twitter at NTV Kenya. And you can tag me at Amina Abdi Rabah. I now want to take you up north to experience the unique opportunity of an unforgettable night under the stars in nature and in true appreciation of the stunning you know the wilderness wildlife that the Sa the Sasab camp in Samburu has to offer you can leave the lodge behind and then you can go off grid with only the bare essentials to enjoy campfires unobstructed views of a star-studded inky black sky and a deep reconnection to the wild Fly camping under the stars. I'm telling you, 2021 will be the year where you will just have to travel differently. The experiences just have to change. It cannot be the same for places we all go to. Now, there is only one place in the world where one can wake up to the utterly unique, once-in-a-lifetime experience of dining with the gentle, statuesque African giraffes at the Giraffe Manor in Karen um, on the outskirts of Nairobi. One can enjoy the delight delightful company of the resident Rothschild's giraffes at the breakfast table. This is without a doubt a brilliantly unscripted yet incredibly intimate um, wildlife experience within easy reach of you who is a city resident and of course for those of you who will choose to visit. Breakfast with giraffes. What? You have to go to giraffe center, try out feeding the giraffes. You know, you give it a bit of mouth to mouth. Mm -hmm. the, it's uh, it's it's interesting. It's uh, have you been honorable um, honorable Sifuna? Have you been Safina Samahani? Have you been to the giraffe center? Have you fed the giraffes? Yes, yes, I've been there. Yeah, the, Actually, the moment uh, where you and, and I think uh, it's one of the most, uh, as you say, intimate relationship you can have with the world. Yeah. Yes. Now, the giraffe manor is where you have breakfast, but when I talk about the center, it's where you get to see so many of those giraffes and you get to, yeah. to do all of those things with them, learn a lot more about the giraffes. But trust me, having breakfast and lunch mm -hmm. with the giraffe, just, you know, eating it with you is an experience you have to, you have to really enjoy um, and go through. Now, when we're talking about uh, the breakfast with the giraffes, I, again, the giraffe manor was, um, or is rather, a place where so many personalities have visited. Ellen DeGeneres was there recently, and it's just magical. Have you stayed there, Dr. Betty? And what can you tell us about your experience? So I haven't stayed at the giraffe manor, but I've visited the giraffe manor. And I think uh, the one thing that stood out for me was how gentle um, uh, the giraffes are. Um, Feeding them is one thing. It's 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 quite at the beginning. You're sort of thinking, mm, I'm not sure I want <laughs> yes. to do this, and then <laughs> when you start to interact with them, they're very gentle, and um, uh, quite friendly as well. I'm sure they're they're slightly more um, domesticated around uh, people, but uh, it's actually an experience worth worth um, worth having. Yes, yeah. I would also urge everyone, trust me, this is something that you want to do for your birthday maybe this year. This is just something you can gift yourself. Um, now, 
let's talk about infrastructure. We're talking, you know, how infrastructure investments are a key component to us growing our industry and how exactly the ministry um, is supporting the initiatives that are all under this. Honorable, uh, of course, it's going to the PS. Well, <laughs> yeah, of... infrastructure comes in all shades. Uh, you have uh, the physical infrastructure like roads um, that connect, uh, uh, you know, different parts of this country where these experiences can be uh, can be enjoyed. Um, and of course, and, and there has been a lot of that uh, uh, in the recent recent times. We've had uh, um, also ICT connectivity. Uh, of course, uh, uh, everybody would want to to share the experience uh, with, with their loved ones and uh, with the world at the end of the day and therefore connectivity is very key. So there's also been a lot of uh, uh, investment in ICT uh, infrastructure, particularly uh, the other day we, we, we had the, uh, the balloons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, and, and interestingly, uh, there's a new segment of travelers who um, uh, they're, they're called uh, the the nomads. Digital nomads. Yeah? Digital nomads. The di yeah. digital nomads. Mm -hmm. And and these are the people who would stay two uh, two months, three months in uh, in a destination, working from there, and 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 and, and therefore connectivity. I, uh, technology, uh, ICT technology, uh, connectivity would be very key for them. So again, this kind of investment that we've been having as a country is geared towards you know, meeting the needs of such a kind of traveler. But I think the most uh, peculiar um, connectivity issues that we've been having also have been also been hinged on uh, how we can become more conscious environmentally. So matters of how do we use water more fr in, a, in a more friendly manner, because mm -hmm. that is still part of infrastructure. Mm -hmm. How do we, uh, for example, uh, deal with the electricity uh, and, and, and therefore renewable energy, that also is part of the, of the, connect, uh, of the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. uh, because at the end of the day, we, these are businesses, they must, make bus they must make business sense. And therefore managing the cost of running these businesses is also important. So we have to make the infrastructure more enabling for that business to, you know, to thrive. Mm -hmm. yeah, and that has, there has been a lot of investment in that area. Yes. Yeah. In fact, if we're talking about being environmentally conscious and just, you know, not wasting a lot, fly camping is a wonderful or alternative. You know, you that, that's just something that's very different. In Samburu at Sasab, please, Dr. Betty, if you mm -hmm. could just expound more mm -hmm. on the kind of experience that Kenyans can afford to if they do decide to go fly camping. Mm -hmm. um, it sounds like something that's quite <laughs> exciting. So, um, so the thing about camping is, 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 is we mentioned earlier um, uh, the various options that, that people have uh, in terms of being able to um, uh, take some time off or take a holiday. And we find that uh, camping seems to be a domain of, of the younger um, uh, traveler um, and, and uh, some uh, travelers with young children. And what it is, is, is the experience, it, it provides both an, an educational experience as well as, um, as, as well as a leisure experience. And it's educational in the sense that if you've got a sort of um, growing children or young children, then the whole concept around setting up the camp, uh, set, setting out your, 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 your camp and, 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 and the tent uh, becomes a whole experience for them. Uh, the outdoors cooking, the setting up of places that um, of things that you will do in the evening, probably lighting up the fire and that sort of thing. The you find that um, we have uh, opportunities in and around the country that uh, provide for the rough and tough uh, camping, but also one that is 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 slightly more moderate, where facilities are provided and therefore you can take uh, your family out uh, camping. Uh, what this does is it gives you um, an outdoors experience that um, is unlike something that you'd experience, say, at home or, or, or doing something else that is not uh, that camping. Um, but also it allows you to to sort of a bonding a session with the people that you go camping with because, unfortunately, the tents are usually <laughs> uh, a medium size. So um, it makes for a good uh, evening out with, with friends. And, and family. Yes. Yeah. 
<laughs> I like it. So we just we're there together. Yes. Don't use phones. You know, it would yeah. be advice not to carry your phone. Mm -hmm. Try and disconnect and mm -hmm. just take a few days and you know just enjoy nature. Yeah. Something else that I was hoping we can all do this year, Dr. Betty, Honorable Safina, if we could all just climb Mount Kenya <laughs> and make it our goal for 2021, it'll be an achievement. I like the PS is looking at me like no that. <laughs> No, 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 no. <laughs> but, you know, when we talk about the great outdoors, as I mentioned before, there was a time where people traveled to three or four places within Kenya, and they did really try much or do much. Mm -hmm. Climbing the mountain, however, Dr. Betty, that seems like quite the challenging adventure. That's going to require some preparation. So maybe mm. we can start off with hiking, gong okay. hills or something like hills. that. <laughs> <laughs> we can start off with hiking gong hills towards Mount climbing Mount Kenya. <laughs> Our diet has to change. We have to start doing 5Ks, yeah. 10Ks yes. before. Yeah. So let's say November. We'll, we'll, yes. we'll start preparing right now. Yes. But tell me more about what it, what it is that people get to do once they you know go for it. You've said that they prepare, which mm -hmm. is important for people to know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You just don't wake up and go in. And climb the mountain it's, mm -hmm. it's not easy it's quite difficult mm -hmm. uh, but what else but what happens is is uh, you find that uh, there's most uh, groups uh, mm -hmm. clubs uh, gyms that prepare people uh, for mountain climbing and it's it's almost a six month six month six to eight month uh, preparation if if you're completely a beginner but uh, if you're slightly more athletic, it's probably a shorter time but the point about it is you have to constantly just build the endurance because mountain climbing is, 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 is hinged around how much endurance you have, but also uh, just to have um, the, the resilience to be able to just go through that, uh, that couple of days without your, your creature comforts. So it's, it's just the preparation to get ready for that climb and, and have the right gear for it and have good guides. Um, I think um, th now we can say that um, uh, mountain climbing um, is becoming a lot more popular because we have um, associations that are specializing in, in guiding uh, for mountain climbing, uh, who we interact with, uh, who can provide the guidance um, for preparation and then also uh, the expectation that, that some climbing a mountain would, would have. And, and therefore, uh, you would then be able to prepare adequately and therefore have a much more enjoyable experience. Yes. Yeah. And I like that you said endurance. Mm -hmm. So since, let me just tap out. I'll, I'll do the others. <laughs> I, will, I will do the kayaking. I will mm -hmm. try. I'm not sure this one is within my league. But for those of you who genuinely love adrenaline and you're very fit and you're all about your health, this is something that you would love to try. The experience, they say, is so exhilarating. It changes you it changes how you think it changes your view on so many different things it's not just one of those trips where you go to and you come back and you know you had good pictures and videos there's a tale there's something that it, it does to you mentally and physically that you sort of don't come back the same individual it's wonderful you should definitely try it out mm -hmm. now let's talk about some of the experiences that have qualified dr betty but mm -hmm. they're yet to qualify mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. Let's talk about so, that. So, so what we do... Um, or rather than uh, yet to join the program, sorry. So uh, in this edition, the 2021-2022 mm -hmm. um, uh, edition of uh, Magical Kenya Signature Experiences, we had uh, 59 entries. And, and, and that shows that we have a huge interest in the signature experience. And, what, and, and, and as you mentioned, we only selected uh, 29. That doesn't mean that um, the other entries were not good enough. It just means that we need to work with them, and we do that. We're very clear about what that experience needs to put in place in order to be able to qualify. So we mentor them, we engage with them, uh, especially as, as the signature experience, um, the Magical Kenya Signature Experience is an ongoing program. So even as we finish the 2021-2022 collection, we begin the, uh, the search for the next collection. So we work with them and give them feedback. You remember I mentioned earlier that even in the pre-selection, where you are not pre-selected, we give very specific areas of improvement 
and guide and mentor you through those those areas so that you 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 may be encouraged to first of all develop a great experience but also to just um, strive to be part of the collection mm. because it is worthwhile exactly and yeah. the ones that um, the 15 experiences that you had spoken about before mm -hmm. together with these 29 you can go ahead and take a look at all of them it's yes. not that now once they unveil the collection for 2021 2022 yes. it mm -hmm. means the others are null and void no mm -hmm. it just means no. we're introducing you to even more signature experiences yeah. mm -hmm. and as dr betty has put it all of those corrections are for you to have a much better uh, package for your guests when they come when they're mm -hmm. traveling when they say that they're coming to your camp or they're coming to your hotel this is what happens and for them is to make sure that it is authentic enough all right now as we continue all right fine so i understand that unfortunately comes to an end but right after the news i'll still be in studio um with uh, dr betty i don't know if the ps will still be with us honorable safina will you be leaving or will you be staying with us we're here till Till midnight. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, we're not. <laughs> Will you be joining us after after the news? Yes. yes. Wonderful. Okay, great. So I'll still have the PS Tourism and of course the CEO in studio with me as we talk all about magical Kenya and continue to unveil even more experiences part of the 2021-2022 collection. And in uh, part of the news, we'll also have the CS for Tourism, Honorable Najib Balala, who'll also talk more about these signature experiences, and we will continue right after the news. Thank you so much for the engagement thus far. Amina Abdi Rabah, time now for the news. We'll get back right after that. Good evening. I have to admit, I didn't like Sukuma Wiki when I was growing up, but now I've created a way to make Sukuma Wiki tastier and meatier. I simply add two Royco beef cubes and the end result is a rich, meaty flavor. And today, I have brought along my harshest food critics for a taste test. My kids. Mm. <laughs> More please! Royco beef cubes. Add two small cubes for a big, meaty taste. How powerful is the healing power of Vaseline? We applied Vaseline jelly to one leaf, the other we left alone. After just a few days, the difference is visible. Nothing locks in moisture better to keep skin restored. That's the healing power of Vaseline. Ah, Helen Paul. Hello, madam. Would you like to join us on this mission? Yes, but how? Just one question for you. How do you keep your toilet clean? I use regular detergent and bleach for washing and removing yellow stains. I've been using it for years. Oh, madam, the regular detergents and bleach are used for washing clothes. To disinfect your toilet properly, you need Hapik 10X. It is specially made for germs and stains removal. Hapik's thick formula settles on stains and gives 10 times better cleaning compared to regular detergents and bleach. Wow, now I'm convinced, Helen Paul. Really? Yeah. Now that she's part of the mission, the next house is yours! Mm -mm -mm. New Tuzo Yogurt Cup Size Yako Bay Yako Just got faster. Get fully locked on Airtel 4G. Now wider coverage to download, stream and browse at high speed. Airtel, the smartphone network. What is family? Family is a solid foundation to build on and a strong pillar to lean on. It is believing in each one of us. 
for the betterment of all of us.